Now at six, Granby Mining Town days are in full swing. We'll take you to some of the events, plus. A small town hopes to bring its community together with its first maker's market. I'm Samantha Walker, and I'll have that story coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOM News at 6. I'm Anthony Saviello. We're going to go to a first look at weather with meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney. Well, overall, today was a pretty nice day. We had temperatures in the low 90s, which is a little bit warmer than what we saw yesterday. Feels like 88 degrees. We have a nice breeze out of the northeast, about 5, 10, 15 miles per hour. Not too bad. Temperatures across the region 88 in Pittsburgh and Iola and Chanute, 90 in Nawada and Independence, 91 in Vanita, 90 in Joplin. So it's not too bad. We're starting to get back in to the upper 80s for the evening time, starting to drop down to the lower temperatures. Today we are getting down to upper 60s for our overnight low, so it's going to be a pretty cool night. And we do have light winds, 5, 10 miles per hour out of the northeast. Now there are some storms moving near Wichita. It is a cold front, although before it makes it into our area, it is going to retreat. But we do have rain chances in the forecast, and we'll talk about it in just a bit. All right, Lindsay, thanks. July is here, and hot temperatures may lead to hot tempers as well. We know the heat can affect us physically, but as Joe Hickman reports, it can affect us mentally as well. As temperatures increase, your ability to think properly is greatly diminished. We tend to see more anger issues, more aggression, because it is a major stressor on the body. Yes, many studies have shown that hotter temps can lead to hot tempers for all of us, because being in the heat affects our body chemistry. You've got that target range where that temperature kind of keeps your, your, your body's metabolism and all of its internal chemistry uh, working appropriately and where it needs to be. Researchers first discovered the link between heat and aggression by looking at crime data. There's more murders, assaults, domestic violence on hot days. Once that hotter weather arrives in the area, uh, our call volume jumps 10 to 15, sometimes as much as 20 percent. More likely to engage in hate speech online, road rage, honking your horns in traffic. During these hotter times, uh, there are definitely more outdoor activities. People are crossing paths with each other. That hotter weather definitely produces more work for us. It makes sense that being uncomfortable makes us more irritable. And that's actually one of the brain's coping mechanisms, as the resources it's devoting to keeping you cool leaves less energy for everything else. And the seriousness of the problem can depend on things like medications or... Age can be a factor for this in terms of your tolerances and how well you can thermoregulate. And if you have an underlying mental health concern, such as depression or anxiety, PTSD, this can absolutely exacerbate that, make those issues a lot worse. So like these elephants, the best thing you can do to avoid getting grumpy is stay cool. And if you do find your anger level starting to rise... Take a step back, take a deep breath, Take four of them if you'd like and be patient and understanding. The world would be a better place uh, if we all did that. Well, the city of Granby is taking on the heat with hosting its 41st annual Old Mining Town celebration. One of the events is a pop-up market which showcases local businesses from across the region. Items for sale include freeze-dried candy, crocheted animals, tumblers, and more. All proceeds from the registration fees of the vendors goes to the Grow Granby Foundation. Well, we've got good weather, uh, see a lot of different people, and uh, hope everybody has a good time. We are better as a community. We support each other. Um, I've seen tons of vendors walk around and support other vendors, and that, that makes me happy. You over 50 vendors registered for the market. Oh, and here's a live look at Columbus, Kansas Freedom Fest 2024. This event is put on by the Columbus, Kansas Fire Department. It is free for the public to attend. Events kicked off today at 5 p.m., but you, if you aren't there right now, don't worry. You can still get on in on the action. Events continue until 9.15 this evening. Those who attend will be able to enjoy some live music, bounce houses, as you can see there, activities for all ages, and lots more. And don't forget about the most important parts. There will be fireworks at the end of the night tonight. 
Local farmer markets are a popular place in the summer for community members to come together and shop locally, supporting each other's businesses. KOAM Samantha Walker has more on one small town working to support a local maker's market. With a population of around 2,100 people, Cherryville, Kansas is by most definitions a small town. But although it may be small, its community is close. We know everything about everybody. I just, I like a rural community. In a small gravel church parking lot, the community is coming together, hosting its first Cherry Vale Makers Market. Its organizer, Elena McPherson, came up with the idea when one of her small businesses hit a block. We wanted to do a you pick flower patch, but it kind of just didn't work out this year, and I grew a lot of flowers. So I started going to the Independence Farmers Market, and I figured why not bring it to my own town. Elena reached out to other locals to see if they would be interested in joining her for a community market, where there are no fees and you can simply set up a table. We have seven vendors, and I know that probably doesn't seem like a lot, but for a town this size, it's, I think it's pretty good for the first time. Booths have a range of goods, including jewelry, flowers, and produce, fresh lemonade, and baked goods. Give her the money, and I'll take a picture oh, with you. Thank you. Community members were excited to support the market, coming out with their children and even pets. It's awesome. Um, someone once said, if you build it, they will come, and I definitely see that in all the activities that I try to get going here. For vendors at the market, they say it's meaningful to see community members come out to support each other like this. It's very heartwarming to see that it's stepping back up to where it was when um, I was a kid. I got involved more in the community because I wanted it to be a better place for my daughter. Um, when I grew up, this was my favorite place to be, so I wanted to invest as much time as I could into this town. So it's very heartwarming to see people invest as well. With support from the community, several vendors sold out at the Maker's Market. For those involved, it's a sign of the potential the small market has. I think this is a great idea. Um, I think anything that brings people together is amazing. Um, we try to do little small events and eventually they become big, so I think this will be another big one for our town. Reporting in Cherryvale, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Today was the first Maker's Market, and after seeing the community's response, organizers say they hope to make it a monthly event. Coming up, local talent stays in the four states as a Carthage football player signs with Pitt State. But first, Missouri Governor Mike Parson vetoes multiple bills that could benefit many local organizations. An update on a fatal hit and run that occurred around 7 p.m. last night near Loma Linda. Missouri Highway Patrol says a bolo or be on the lookout was issued last night for a Dodge Dakota pickup truck. Tips from the public allowed authorities to locate said pickup and the driver who was taken into custody and his truck seized is in evidence. This is exclusive. Uh, from us here at KOAM, the woman he struck has been identified as Sheldana Wood. She was 60 years old. First responders spending their Saturday morning containing a fire at Missouri Metal Recycling, Web City Fire, Police and EMS all responding this morning with both the Dunaweg and Carl Junction Fire Departments responding as mutual aid. Reports say that heavy black smoke was visible from all over town and fire has, the fire has reportedly been contained. Well, Missouri Governor Mike Parsons is vetoing multiple bills that requested money from the state budget. Many organizations are hearing the bad news. It's a small park just north on Highway 65, just a few miles north of Branson. The nonprofit that runs it had some high hopes to get some additional funding from the state for improvements, but now those improvements will just have to wait. It's called Little Heroes Park. It's where the nonprofit Life's Journey set up shop. The founder tells us that the camp is a Christian based camp. Families can come together. They can play different sports like basketball, fishing, archery, all while learning about things from Bible based teachings. The park has been growing in recent years and now they're waiting to expand a bit and renovate. They reached out to the legislature for a grant, but the governor just vetoed that bill. The 50,000 that was going to come was going to basically do a second soccer basketball court 
which would you know encourage be able to have uh, tournaments for pickleball for three on three basketball for soccer and then improvements in the parking lot so hey it would have went a long ways if we would have got that Rikate says he's understanding of how the legislature works. He's just grateful state leaders took the time to get the park worked into the bill. A little later, storms this past week wreaking havoc on Missourians. We'll have the details. And we'll talk about the uh, upcoming storms that we have at the beginning of this week right after the break. It is still 4th of July weekend and it's shaping up to be a pretty good one. We'll go ahead, take a look outside downtown Joplin from the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Clear skies, we do have a few fair weathered clouds out there, but overall today is shaping up to be a really great day. We have a light breeze out of the southwest. We'll shift over tomorrow as we have a cold front passing. Now, some storms are making their way towards Wichita, but before they move into our area, that cold front's going to retreat and we're going to stay mostly dry for the remainder of the evening and into tomorrow morning. The cold front that is moving into Wichita did drop a couple tornadoes, some wind damage. It is going to be a strong one, although as it moves through our area tomorrow, we're really not looking at a severe threat. For the remainder of the night, going to be pretty clear. Temperatures are dropping down to about 70 degrees and upper 60s in surrounding counties as well. Now, those drought conditions are creeping back in. We've got a moderate risk out in Joplin, Monette, but just dry conditions for most of our other southern counties. Luckily, we do have some rain chances moving in tomorrow. 89 for our high depends on when those storms do move in. We've got them forecasted early afternoon if that happens and we'll stay pretty cool. Now, if they do hold off, we may get up to lower 90s, but it's not going to be too warm tomorrow. It's going to be a nice morning, evening showers and thunderstorms in the overnight hours as well. Those winds shift from the southwest 10 15 miles per hour to the northeast pretty light 5 10 miles per hour. So tonight, like I said, that cold front retreats and we're not going to see anything else until early afternoon on Sunday. We may have a few showers pushing into our western counties a little bit earlier, but likely they'll hold off until about 1232. Then we do have those thunderstorms and showers pushing into our central counties. When we move into the evening, 8 p.m., it's going to be widely scattered thunderstorms, and that's going to continue well into the overnight hours and into early Monday morning. So Joplin Metro is getting hit uh, Sunday, 11 p.m., and that's going to continue, like I said, until early sun Monday morning, 6 a.m., we clear out. Mostly cloudy, but we do get some sun in there in the early afternoon hours on Monday, and then we do have more rain chances continuing Monday through early Tuesday as well. It's going to be a cold front, so it does drop our temperatures down to 85 on Monday, 83 on Tuesday, 89 on Wednesday. So we drop back down to about average for most of the week, but we do warm right back up to the upper 90s by next weekend. Not a fan of upper 90s. No. But it's summer as you continue. To I tell definitely me. I can't have enjoyed the about last the summer. I have enjoyed the last couple of days though, you know, in the eighties and yeah. clear skies. It's been nice. It has been nice. It has. Been. Yeah. Thanks, Lindsay. A cleanup for dozens is underway after strong winds and a powerful storm ripped through Cape Fair on Table Rock Lake. Officials say a tornado damaged nearly twenty boats at the dock and took down a nearby cell tower. Charmel Odell has the latest. Ground level winds nearly 70 miles per hour swept through Cape Fair Thursday evening. Uh, we did have some substantial dam damage here uh, at the Cape Fair uh, boat dock and campground uh, and then also some of the areas in the, in the area as far as uh, limbs and trees down and so forth. Officials say so far no injuries have been reported, but there were several water rescues, including the rescue of Kevin Smith's boat. Originally, Smith planned on spending the 4th enjoying the lake with his family and friends, but it wasn't until this morning he got the message those plans were overturned. We got a notice this morning that Cape Fair was closed because it had damage from a tornado and that one of the docks had flipped over and we didn't know if our boat was in that dock or not. My boat was docked right here in A2020 and uh, right here where that dock is right out there right now and uh, right now my boat is submerged underwater. Dock A was the only dock to be split from the rest of its remains, damaging at least 
20 boats. But not only this, an entire cell tower was also severely damaged, leaving thousands in the area without any cell service. The top of the tower was actually taken off of the tower and then the other tower, the next closest one, the uh, optics line was down. So we had very limited communication. Crews have spent Independence Day recovering the overturned boats. Southern Stone County firefighters use rescue rafts like the one you see here to get people who were stuck out here Wednesday night. There's a lot of debris in the lake that has to be pulled out and not just here at, at Cape Fair, but throughout Table Rock Lake. Probably the most expensive thing, of course, is going to be the boat dock and the cell tower. Still ahead, the Joplin Outlaws look to snap their three game losing streak and a local high school football player commits to Pittsburgh State. Brock Baldridge has those stories and more up next. Pittsburgh State football has been busy adding talent to their roster this offseason. This weekend, the Gorillas pick up a local commitment out of Carthage High School. Trevor Meadows out of Carthage announced on his social media platforms that he is committed to continue his football career and academic career to Pittsburgh State University. In his junior season, Meadows was second team all COC defensive lineman and was selected to the Class 5 SWMFCA first team all defense. Uh, since day one, I've started talking to Everett and Nutt, Coach Nutt, and uh, just they've shown me love. They always keep a hold of me, call, text me, and just it's just a program that wins. I mean, they're competing, uh, wanting to compete for national championships, and I want to be a part of it. I used to live here when I was younger, came back in uh, eighth grade, 160 pounds, and uh, playing. I was really small at the end, and then working with Coach Guidi and just all my coaches getting bigger, stronger, faster, just developed me into being the player I am now and give them the chance to play at the next level. The Joplin Outlaws have lost three straight games heading into Saturday. Joplin looks to even the series after dropping the opening game to the first place Abilene Flying Bison. So Joplin lost a tough game last night. They look to bounce back tonight against Abilene. Joplin falls to third place in the Mid-American League standings after last night's loss. First pitch in this game is scheduled for 7.05 p.m. Well, the highlights from that game right here tonight at 10. In Major League Baseball, the St. Louis Cardinals visit the Washington Nationals. Really tough day for Lance Lynn on the mound as he gives up nine earned runs in the first two innings of the game. Washington goes on to win big to beat St. Louis 14 to six. And the Kansas City Royals look to bounce back after losing last night's series opener to the Colorado Rockies. First pitch for that one is scheduled for 8, 10 p.m. We'll have a final score update from Denver tonight at 10. Well, there have been many great catches in Major League Baseball history over the years, but I'm not sure if anyone quite tops this one. Joey Loperfito of the Houston Astros makes a catch with his bare hands at the wall. Check out the replay on this one. This ball goes into his glove, pops out the wall, and still manages to make that catch with his bare hand. What a play that one is. Well, that's your look for sports. We're back with more after this. Well, heading back to Granby, another old mining town tradition is the parade. Some things on display during the parade include a train that was converted into a float, antique vehicles, tractors, and more. Local public servants were also invited to participate in the parade. Sounds well, like a fun time. Brock, I like your tie today. Oh, thank you, yeah. Anthony. I <laughs> like that you're representing Missouri Southern Colors. Yes, absolutely. That was the whole <laughs> intention. And final weather for us. Well, yeah, we've got nicer conditions today, but tomorrow we do have some thunderstorm chances in the evening time. It is a cold front moving through, so temperatures are going to drop down to about average for the remainder of the week after the storms finally clear out. And final sports note. Outlaws look to bounce back tonight. First 250 kids at the gate get a free Joplin Outlaws baseball. So get out there and get a baseball. Do All I right. count as a kid? No. Uh, oh. Sorry. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's our time for tonight. We'll see you right back here at 10 from all of us here at KYM. Have a great night.